What would I like to see? No fear, not London. No, no Windermere. No Paris with its sky so clear. Give me a look at Sheffield. I have it in my mental eye. Its valleys and its uplands high. Its smoke cloud flung against the sky. The smoke that blackens Sheffield. It's five small rills that slowly steal past rolling mill and grinding wheel. Their very names can make me feel that I belong to Sheffield. O oh, Loxley, Rivlin, Porter, Sheaf, flow onward to the Don, your chief, and ripple out your challenge brief. Men must be free in Sheffield. I know each tower and lofty dome that's long made Sheffield air its home. And where some others lately come, have reared their heads in Sheffield. I mark each street and winding lane. Oh yes, they're black. Oh yes, they're plain. But let me tread them once again, and heaven will shine in Sheffield. Could I but see that smoke cap thick, meet swarthy breech Tom and Dick, and lads with scissors on a stick, I'd know I was in Sheffield. But here we are. What for, you say? To teach the Bosch the time of day and keep him far enough away from setting foot in Sheffield. <laughs> the next piece is written by the Reverend Sidney T.G. Smith, the Vicar of Walkley at the time, who was here of the original dedication of the window from a little book called Ministerial Reminiscences, Reminiscences <coughs> published in 1926. He writes of an incident of curious interest. The men at the front used to look forward with eager longing for news from home, and in addition to letters, they gratefully welcomed local newspapers and magazines. A Walkley lad found one of our parish magazines out in the field under these remarkable circumstances. He'd been sent out during the night to a listening post near the German trenches, and as the day began to break, he was creeping home. And he paused for a moment's rest, and near him he discerned some paper, which his curiosity led him to secure and take with him into the trench. When, to his amazement and delight, he discovered it was to be a recent copy of Walkley Parish magazine. In it, he learned for the first time that a near friend of his had been killed at the front. I wonder if this was one of the men named here. It could have been. Either of them could have been. And to end this bit marked reading, I'm going to read a short poem written by Siobhan Hoyes. Uh, she was reflecting after seeing the exhibition, which is on these walls here, and through in that room. So it's particularly about these nine men. War, a glorious business, an exciting adventure, a chance to be a man. The song, a strip of murdered nature, smashed up wood, churned up soil, men digging deeper into the earth. We will remember you, nine men, nine lives given valiantly for your country. We will remember you when we see clusters of delicate, Vibrant crimson poppies wafting in the gentle breeze. We will remember. World War One was such a terrible time for so many people. One of the pledges that was made in the face of so huge a loss of young man, men was that we will remember them. And this window that we're about to see was the way that Walkley Reform Club remembered them. 
And now, a hundred years after the outbreak of the Great War, we are here to remember again, to bring these men home in a new way, not just as fading names, but lit up as people from the fabric of history in this place where they once played billiards. Witnessed by you, their families and friends from the future that they did not have. The Walkley historians are now going to unveil the restored window. here and I'm going to point it to them and just briefly say something about each man. There's plenty more to read about them in the exhibitions. So if I can find them. <laughs> First one, Private George Barnett of Providence Road. A plumber who enlisted in the Yorks and Lancs Regiment, 10th Service Battalion, was killed 21st of April 1917 at the Battle of the Scarp, aged 22. Private James Craven of Parsonage Crescent, a Britannica metalsmith at Bramwell & Co. on Henry Street. He signed up September 1940 with nearly all of these others, joined the 10th Battalion of the Rifle Brigade, reported missing in action at the Battle of Guillemot on the Somme, 3rd of September 1916, aged 26, remembered at Thiepval with those whose bodies were never found. His Bible was returned to his family. Frank Haycock, sorry, Frank Hartley, I'm going to link them up. Private Frank Hartley, an auctioneer's clerk from Crooks, joined the 12th Battalion, Carroll's <coughs> Yorkshire and Lancs Regiment, in the first advance at the Battle of the Somme, where he was killed in action, 1st of July 1916, aged 23. Two razors and cases were returned to his family. Isaac Haycock of Howard Road, an insurance clerk dealing with accident and fire insurance, also joined the 12th Battalion Pals Yorks and Lancs Regiment, killed at the Battle of the Somme on the 1st of <coughs> July 1916, aged 23. Frederick Moses, a student at Sheffield University, a local man, studying for a degree in physics, joined the 12th Battalion Pals, Yorks and Lancs Regiment, killed at the Battle of the Somme, 1st of July, 1916, aged 22. Also remembered on the Thiefball Memorial. His school ruler with his name on it remains with us. Archie Shelley from Walkley Road, who worked at Neeps End Gas Works, enlisted in the Grenadier Guards, September 1914. Wounded by a bullet passing through his head at the Second Battle of Ypres in May 1915. Eventually, he was evacuated to the Royal London Hospital, where he died of a massive infection, aged 24. Arnold Turner of Cam Street, an assayer in precious metals at Sheffield Smelting Company, another member of the Reform Club men to join the 12th Battalion Pals, York and Lancs Regiment. He survived the first day of the Battle of the Somme and fought on, eventually reported as missing in action at Bokwai 
on March the 9th, 1917, aged 25 years. His family had to wait seven months before he was reported as dead. His dog tag was returned via the Germans through the American Embassy. Arthur Wall, a married man from Hull Street, Sheffield, Walkley, who was a silversmith, also enlisted into the 12th Battalion Pals, Yorks and Lanx Regiment, and also survived the song. He transferred into the Northumberland Fusiliers and went through many battles before he was missing in action near Ypres on the 14th of October, 1917, aged 27. And in the middle, Leonard Wormsley of Winter Street, the only conscripted man at the age of 18 into the King's Liverpool Regiment, 4th Extra Reserve Battalion. He died of his wounds at the Battle of St Quintin Canal on the 27th of September 1918, still only 18 years old. His only brother having been killed in July of the same year, aged 20. This window was already made by the time the news of Leonard's death had been received. It was only received a week before the dedication, which is why he holds pride of place in the middle. But also the youngest and the only one conscripted seems right. So we're now going to hold a minute's silence. Remember these nine men, before I say a prayer of rededication and invite you, the family, to lay flowers. <clears throat> so please stand if you can, but will if you can't, for this minute. So let us remember these nine men. Now, a prayer to rededicate to this window. <coughs> Almighty God, creator of all, who makes nothing in vain and loves all that he has created, we rededicate this window made to honour and remember nine Walkley men from long ago. May all who come to see it stop to reflect on those men from this community and many others who lost their lives in the Great War and other conflicts which continue to this day. To reflect on the importance of remembrance and reconciliation and on the futility of war and the need for peace. As they pause, may they know your loving presence with them and let them and us never lose hope in the face of adversity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let us now lay flowers that we have in our hands. Here on this table in front is an act of remembrance. Thank 
forward.
they sort of been run back. They've been remembered. They've been celebrated. They are here in pristine condition. The photographs on the window. Let us now do what they did at the first dedication, which is applaud what they did. And it's a long time ago, but let's end this. This. I don't know what you call it? Ceremony with some applause.